agents and cleaning agents are classified into the following basic categories. The first one is water, then we have detergents, then we have abrasive, we have degreasers, we have acid cleansers, cleaners, we have organic solvent, and still we have other cleaning agents like deodorants, we have uh, bleaches, and we are going to look into all that. Now, let us start with the basic one, which is the pH scale. So from chemistry, I guess you can still understand what was the pH scale, which is normally used to determine the alkalinity and acidity of a given product. That is the basic function of the pH scale. Remember, 6 to 7 is normally the neutral part. Then we have conch acids, which is 0 to 3. Then we have weak acids, which is 4, 5 there, past 3. Then we move to 4, 5. Those ones are weak acids. Then we have weak alkaline, past 8, 9, 10, 11. Then 12 to 14 comes alkalines. So those are the things we are going to use. Basically, the cleaning agents fall into that category where water is the neutral one. And then we have other cleaning agent which will either fall as acidic or basic. So let us move on where we have water. And water is normally the simplest cleaning agent we have in housekeeping. But the problem with water is that water normally has a high surface tension to have some high surface tension that means the molecules in water are normally tightly held together therefore water alone cannot facilitate a cleaning program cannot do any cleaning on a surface remember when somebody asks you to define cleaning it is normally the removal of dust and dirt from a surface by the use of a detergent and a disinfectant. The purpose of a detergent is normally to remove the surface dust and dirt from the surface, while the purpose of a disinfectant is to kill germs and prevent their growth. That is what we do when we perform cleaning. So water alone cannot do that work because of its characteristic of high surface tension. The molecules inside it are tightly held and therefore they cannot facilitate cleaning. That's why we add other cleaning agents in water to lower its surface tension to break the bonds inside the water so that it can perform cleaning. So through the notes, water alone is a poor cleaning agent because it has high surface tension. That means it has low wetting powers, therefore water alone cannot wet the surface. If you pour water on the floor, you will just see it tightly held there. Come on the surface that is sliding in a teremuka evo, it will move and go and stop at some place because of the molecules that are tied to held together inside it. Then poor ability to hold soil in a suspension true uchafu is what we term as soil in housekeeping when soil gets into contact with water remember water alone cannot remove it or water alone the soil will dissolve inside the water therefore it will not help you but you will find when we use these cleaning agents these cleaning agents Surely, Amnesty.
I can see Caro, I can see Christine, I can see Mercy, Snatha. Snatha can hear me. Uh -huh. Bridget said she's hearing me. Wanjiku, what is wrong, surely? How many network yako? What have you done? Ama it's your speaker. Kindly check on it. Okay, so we move to water. And I've said the three characteristics of water. Number one, low weighting powers. It cannot wet a surface. One. Number two, poor ability to hold soil in suspension. I have said water will either make that soil to dissolve inside it and mix well with it. Therefore, if it is ink, if you continue mopping a surface, the surface will have ink. And then the lastly, limited ability to emulsify grease. To emulsify is to break. So water alone, if you go to the kitchen where there's a lot of oil on the surfaces and on the floor, if you try mopping that place, the dirt will not come out. So that are the three major reasons of water, and that's why problems of water, and that's why we add other cleaning agents so that they can bring inside the water their characteristics so that we can perform cleaning on them. So the first thing you need to know about water is that in the hospitality establishments like hotels, you cannot purchase water from the Nairobi sewage company, sewerage company, or wherever, from any water company that you are close to. That one can be very expensive. We Because we use the water in the gardens, in housekeeping, in the kitchen, etc. That water can be very expensive. That's why in hospitality establishment, if you look in those places very well, you will see boreholes have been dug in those places. Remember when you fetch water from a borehole, it is automatically hard water. And hard water has a lot of problems that when you use it with it, there are so much disadvantages that occur alongside the duties. That's why we normally soften water in housekeeping. So we will dig as many as five boreholes and above in the establishment. But remember, we must undergo the water softening process. Higher. Water has two basic salts. Water has two basic salts in it. Saia tangaleo chupa mineral water. You will see the basic salts in water is either calcium or magnesium. Not all. It is either calcium, it is always calcium and magnesium. Those ones are the big salts in water. So now, what causes water hardness? Water hardness is normally divided into two. We have temporary water hardness, then we have permanent water hardness. Temporary water hardness is normally caused by the presence of carbonates in the water. So it will be magnesium carbonate, it will be calcium carbonate inside the water. While permanent water hardness is normally caused by the presence of sulfate in, salt, in water. So it will be magnesium sulfate or it will be calcium sulfate. So I know somebody is asking, where do these ones come along? So in Mesema, water itself has to salt. Kama majiamvua, ikinyesha, in it, we normally have two salts in it. It will be either calcium salt, it will be calcium salt and magnesium salt. But remember, in ikinyesha, it will penetrate deep inside the ground. So it's mawe, huko chini, and 
soil. They are the ones that contain the sulfur and the, the, the carbonate salt. So when they react, when they meet together, as water tries to penetrate deep underground, the reaction occurs. That's where we will now get water to have a compound like magnesium carbonate, calcium carbonate, calcium bicarbonate, magnesium bicarbonate in it because of that combination. Na nimesema, carbonates cause temporary water hardness, while permanent water hardness is caused by the presence of sulfate in them. So the other thing the housekeeper has to do, because you maji yata we mwenye unajui, I guess umechota maji ya kisima. Ukiiteka tu, you know very well that water is always hard. And it will lead to the wastage of cleaning agents in housekeeping department. So the housekeeper has to purchase agents that will be used for softening the water. The first way how the housekeeper softens the water is normally by the by the addition. So temporary water hardness, let me address temporary water hardness, is normally removed by heating your water to a temperature of 72 degrees Celsius. Temporary water hardness, which is caused by carbonate, is normally removed by heating your water to a temperature of 72 degrees centigrade. The water normally softens. While permanent water hardness that is caused by sulfate are normally removed by the use of three methods. Number one addition of soda into it. So soda, the normally strong alkalis in housekeeping department like the caustic soda is dissolved into that hard water. Then it will become salt. A given proportion is normally dissolved into that hard water, then it becomes soft. Then we again remove temporary water, permanent water hardness by the use of a sequestering agent. The purpose of a sequestering agent when it is added to the hard water is normally to prevent the formation of scum. So again, it will be dissolved inside their purpose to prevent the formation of scum. Then the last one we have is normally addition of permute. Permute it is normally a container beneath it apochini washimo zimetambolewa. Then natural resins are normally put inside that container to hang. So resin beads naturally normally have sodium ions attached to it. But remember water has calcium and magnesium salts in it. So when it comes as hard water, ukichota hiyo hard water from the borehole, itakuja kama calcium hydrogen sulfate ama calcium sulfate. And then you pour it into this container that has resin beads in it. Na nimesema, resin normally have sodium ions hanged on it. A chemical reaction normally occurs. Where calcium hydrogen sulfate maji, it react na hii resin enye ikona sodium. Remember on the periodic chart, sodium is stronger than calcium. Therefore, it will take away the hydrogen sulfate from the calcium and then the water that will pass through the resin container, the permutite, will be sodium hydrogen sulfate and the calcium ions will remain with the resin 
beads because the resin beads even usually have the high affinity for for calcium so after the chemical reaction occurs the water that passes sodium hydrogen sulfate remember it is now a mixture and uh, again from chemistry sodium and sulfur combines well it does not form a precipitate so the water that is the water now we have in our taps that is the water that we will use for working in housekeeping department so that is what even water companies do they have to remove the water hardness if it happens either by the addition of soda by the addition of a sequestering agent and we normally so have the sodium sequicarbonate as an example of a sequestering sodium hexamatophosphate is an example of a sequestering agent so let me write there sodium hexamato So whatever I have written, that one is normally an example of a sequestering agent used in housekeeping department to prevent the formation of scum in water. Then in Mesema, the last way how we remove water hardness in housekeeping is by the use of permutite. Ni mesema, Permutite container, it is a container, imetobolewa hapo chini, then you put natural resins on it. Natural resin is just obtained, you just buy it, you hang it there in the container. Resin itself has calcium as an ingredient. Kisha. You take that water, that hard water, and you may fetch from the borehole. You pour into it. Remember, the hard water now has permanent water hardness. So, nanilisema water has two salts, calcium and magnesium. So, that is water that is calcium hydrogen sulfate being poured into the permutite container. Resin has high affinity for So resin has high affinity for calcium ion. Now resin itself has resin itself has Okay, Wanjiku, I have understood you. I, so, I was saying something. Resin itself has sodium, uh, has sodium ion, while uh, water has the calcium ion. So, ionization normally takes place a chemical reaction takes place with ionization whereby when you pour calcium hydrogen sulfate in the permitted container nimesema from the periodic chart sodium is stronger than calcium a reaction will take place whereby sodium will take away the hydrogen sulfate from the calcium so the water will pass through sodium hydrogen sulfate and the calcium ion will remain stuck on the resin now whatever will have happened will be ionization which will lead to the formation of soft water that we have so i hope so that is how we obtain water in our taps the next cleaning agent we have in housekeeping department is a detergent a detergent is normally a 
cleaning agent that is used in conjunction with the water to remove dirt from a surface. So it will remove it completely by wetting the surface. The deta a detergent has ability to wet a surface. It will break the bones of grease from the surface. And even it will prevent redeposition. Redeposition ni uchafu kurudi onto the surface that you will remove. So utona hapo hivo kwa notes tena nikona characteristics of an ideal detergent and we start with basic characteristic of an of a detergent good wetting power to lower the surface tension of water so that the solution penetrates into the surface remember water has high surface tension so a good detergent must be able to lower the surface tension of water to break the bonds of water so that the surface can be thoroughly wet then good emulsifying power to break the bonds of grease and oil to facilitate cleaning on the surface so grease and oil ni mafuta uko jikoni then good suspending power to remove the dirt from the surface and prevent redeposition of the dirt from the surface so mtu akikuuliza what are the basic properties of water or for detergent there are those three good wetting power good emulsifying power and good suspending power the following are other additional characteristic of a detergent it should be harmless to the user that means it should not crack your skin cut your skin eat your skin etc it should be biodegradable that means it can decompose next it should be effective in warm water and even cold water without forming scum next it should cleanse with re, with minimum agitation agitation ni kusugua so a good detergent uki weka tu kwa maji then you pour it on a surface that you are trying to clean it should be able to start removing dirt from it without you using extra and too much power on it a good detergent should be easily rinsed out when you start rinsing the surface is equal very sticky on that surface that gives you a lot of power and a lot of thinking machines it is to remove it then lastly it should be economical in use don't use too much of it just a little and you can see the results composition of detergent the chemical composition of a detergent the basic ingredient in a detergent not the basic ingredient but the active agent in a detergent is normally termed as a surfactant an active agent in a detergent is normally termed as a surfactant so it is in the surfactant that has those characteristics to may discuss happily good wetting power iso so a surfactant is what has those characteristics a surfactant normally has a head and a tail a surfactant has a head and a tail the head is normally termed as the hydrophobic end hydro thick end while the tail is normally termed as hydrophilic end so hydro is the scientific name of water phobic is normally to love yangalia kwa dictionary something that is phobic is to love while philic is normally to hate so the head is normally the water loving part of a surfactant while the tail is normally the water hating side of a surfactant so when you clean what normally happens 
The suffocant will come dissolved into the water as active as it can be. The water loving part of the suffocant is what normally allows the mixture of water and the detergent so that when it comes on a surface, it thoroughly wets the surface and it facilitates the cleaning. While the water heating side of the suffocant, the hydrophilic end, after the cleaning process, because it hates water, it will just remain hanging inside the water. It does not want to come into contact with the water. But your chaff with a talker from the surface, it is the hydrophilic end that holds the soil. You dimefanya ukimalisa kupanguza ata nyumba, utaona kwamba, when you go to pour water away, the soil will always remain underneath the container, the buckets you are using to hold, the, to clean the house. It is normally the hydrophilic eggs that, because it hates water, it will be forced to hold the that together. So the, hydrophob the hydrophobic side will hold, will hold, will facilitate the detergent to mix up with the water very well, while the hydrophilic end, which is the, the heating side, will heat the water and it will hold the dirt as cleaning continue. So when you are cleaning a surface, that is what normally happens. Then we have the alkaline builders as another ingredient that is used to clean as an ingredient inside the detergent. And the alkaline builders, they normally form the highest percentage of the ingredients that are used to make any detergent. And they include borates, silicates, and soda. That is why a detergent is normally termed as basic. The purpose of alkaline builders is normally to soften the water. Remember, most alkalines, most detergents are alkaline by nature, and they are not supposed to be used to clean or wash alkaline or to clean or wash animal fibers because they normally make the animal fibers to felt zinari bika the other ingredient in a detergent we normally have is a bulking agent and it normally enables the detergent to free to flow freely. That means if either umemaliza kutumia, then you pour it so that it can pass through the sewerage, iende mpaka kwa sewage. It will be able to flow inside their well without blocking the pipe. A detergent also has the stabilizers, the forming agents, the thanalomites, ethanol, Ethanolamides, they are normally used to ensure that a detergent has lather in them, lather ni poof. That's why we add forming agents in a detergent, does it a poof, so that it can work well. Then we have chelating agents, and chelating agents just act as sequestering agents inside a detergent to prevent the formation of scum when we are cleaning. We have suspending agents, and to suspend is just to prevent redeposition, which have to put it back to the surface. Then we have bleaches, and the most common bleach in a detergent is normally sodium perborate. Yeah, that's why you ask yourself, in Goyangu ya black, I have never bleached it kwa jik. But how comes it is losing color? It is due to the presence of sodium perborate in it. It is a weak bleach 
but also helping whiten the surface. We have conditioning agents. They are the ones that normally enable a surface or a piece of cloth after washing or cleaning to remain crispy and fresh, firm and dry. We have whiteners in a detergent and the purpose of whiteners is normally now to allow you see and it normally uses the principle of the ultraviolet rays for you to see that without whiteners utaona tunguyako bado ni chafu hata umeisugua with much strength as you could then we have enzymes and enzymes will be used to remove protein stains from your fabric Remember, enzymes work within a temperature of 40, 50 degrees centigrade. When it is below 40, it is inactive. Above 50, an enzyme gets denatured. Therefore, if you have a protein stain on your garment or on the surface you are cleaning, remember protein in a kama milk, mayai, dam, we remove them by the use of enzymes then the last ingredient that is used to make a detergent is the germicides perfumes and dye stuff germicide antibacterial properties perfume ndio ukienda kwa dugu utasema nataka hii omo ya 14 days of freshness taki omo original ni warufu ndi na drug ndi usinunue star soft then dye stuff the purpose of a dye stuff is normally to prevent a cloth color from running. Kuna zile mkuo ukiosha, unapata color inanza kufade. So a detergent, in a detergent, you normally add dye stuffs to prevent it from running. Your color kutoka. Types of detergent. The first Basically, you need to know that we make so many. We make detergents and soaps by a process known as saponification. So, tena ni meandika sa. And this one is normally saponification is normally the process of reacting an alkali with fat or oil. When you react an alkali like caustic soda, ama borax, with fat or oil, other ingredients added to it, we normally get a detergent. The process is normally known as saponification. A soap, they are effect, a soap is effective in hard water. That is one good characteristic. It should be effective in water. Two, they are the ones that are used as toilet soap. Three, they are cheap and effective in soft water. Four, they don't form scum. And lastly, they are not effective in acidic solution. So remember, it is a bunyakuoga. It is not a detergent, but it is normally termed as a toilet soap. <coughs> they are normally available in cake and liquid soap. Cake ni kama yu size ya deton. That one we normally term it as a cake you know what is a liquid soap then we have bar soap which will be used for heavier cleaning and laundry work then we have flakes flakes are normally those soaps that are normally made in a mild way and they are used 
to wash or clean the 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 fragile surfaces and clothes that we have so so we move across detergents are normally divided into two they will be liquid synthetic sabuni karo sabuni ya kuoga can form scum i'm sorry for that mistake i have made i am detergents are normally divided into two we have liquid synthetic detergent and we have powdered synthetic detergent a liquid synthetic detergent is normally used to clean lightly soiled surfaces while powdered synthetic detergents are used to clean heavily soiled surfaces that is the difference so a liquid synthetic is the one that comes in a watery form while a powdered synthetic is the one that will come in a powder form liquid synthetic are used to clean lightly soiled surfaces while powdered synthetic are used to clean very dirty surfaces the next cleaning we have is abrasive and abrasives are normally cleaning agents in housekeeping department that are used to rub or scratch surfaces so that means when you will be performing cleaning you will either rub or scratch a surface to a surface to remove either dirt stain or tarnish from it that is the function of an abrasive a layman's abrasive we have on a day-to-day -day basis ni kama super bright in housekeeping department we have other other abrasives to use we have the pumice stone we have feldspar etc but in case you have you or you are working in a very high class establishment you can have other high class abrasive like the jewelers rock also known as the pink oxide of iron and we have the filtered chalk what to naita the precipitated thing those ones are the high class abrasives we have in housekeeping department so don't up with jewelers rogue it is a very fine abrasive used for cleaning silver and gold when they tarnish they have to shine again that is where we use it we have the powdered pumice it is a bit rough it is used for cleaning baths and basin surfaces we have nylon polyester and metal bits. some are fine some are coarse they are used for cleaning floors we have steel wool heavy cleaning and removal of seals or waxes so abrasives are normally combined with alkali to help in the cleaning process you can also add glycerin to it you can add chlorine to it and also other organic solvents on it into it remember an abrasive is used to scratch a surface you can add other cleaning agents to the abrasive and you will use it to perform cleaning also we normally have scoring powder and we have scoring pastes that are also abrasives in place an example of a scoring powder ni kama vim where the basic ingredient ndani ya vim ina kuanga limestone and limestone is normally basic and also chlorine small amounts of chlorine are normally added to it that's why when you use it with bare hands it normally eats you your skin away alkaline bases are also added to it 
so that it can be able to have the characteristics of a detergent, good wetting power, suspending power, and emulsifying power. It will not be used on a painted surface because it will eat it away. Do not apply it generously on a surface too much. It will eat the surface. Above, when you are using it, remember to cover your skin so that it does not eat your skin away. That's why you are told if you are using it, you apply the vim on a surface, then you use it for cleaning the surface. Or else if it comes into contact with your skin, it will be very harsh on it. Then we have the scoring pests, also used in housekeeping. An example to kuna axion, ziko mingi sana sa in the market. Apart from axion, to kuna morning fresh etc. They are now milder compared to it is milder in action. It contains finely ground calcite that will suffocate polyphosphate to maintain alkalinity and ammonia as a preservative. Apply on a damp cloth, then use it to clean a surface, and then you have to rinse it off. Axions can be used on painted surfaces, the vitreous surfaces, enamel baths, even zile sinks, the new kwa bath. Best applied by the use of a sponge and you will rinse it off. We have toilet cleansers. And toilet cleansers are the ones that are used for cleaning toilet. Remember, they come in different forms. It will come in a crystalline form. It will come in a liquid form. So the crystalline form, so that you flash chop, it dissolves inside the toilet. But the liquid form, when you want to clean the toilet, you use it to clean the toilet. You need to understand that the basic ingredient when it comes to when it comes to cleaning the toilet, the basic ingredient inside a toilet cleanser is normally conch hydrochloric acid. And because it is conch from the chemistry, we were taught that it is very harsh and very reactive therefore when you use a toilet cleanser to clean the toilet you should never mix it with any other ingredient so you find at home that you add detergent you add jig into the toilet cleanser it is very bad and it is very risky a reaction can really occur so the basic ingredient in Daniel Domestos, Harpic, Blue, ETC, is normally con hydrochloric acid because the function of an acid is normally to remove metallic stain from surfaces. While whatever you remove, either as a short call or long call, is normally metallic in nature because of the basic ingredient in your body, which is iron. Now, iron is metallic. So it is removed by the use of conch hydrochloric acid. And remember to follow instruction from the manufacturer's label. At Aquambia, you put the toilet cleanser, wait for two minutes, wait for 15 minutes. That is the instruction that you're supposed to follow. Window cleansers, they are used to clean windows. The basic ingredient in a window cleanser is normally the isopropyl alcohol. It is what will you put on a piece of rag, then you use it to clean the window. We normally say if the window is too dirty, you are allowed to wash it first. So in housekeeping, when it comes to window, to on a weekly cleaning of windows, and we have daily cleaning of windows come you're just doing a daily cleaning that is when you use the window cleanser but come window yako imekasi kumingi bila kuwasha that is where now we use the three types of waters in housekeeping that are used for cleaning 
first water is normally warm water. In the first bucket, is no warm water with detergent. The second bucket we normally put is cold water with disinfectant. The last water is normally cold, clear water. So the first water is normally warm with detergent to remove the surface dust and dirt to discuss the characteristics of a detergent. The second water is cold water with disinfectant to kill germs and prevent growth. Then the last water is cold, clear water to remove the traces of soap from the window armor surface. The next cleaning agent we have is and ammonia, and these ones are alkalis. Alkalis now will be used as grease emulsifiers. They are used to remove grease from surfaces. Remember, these are very strong alkalis. Now, in housekeeping, what to nasema? When you use a strong in a surface, that surface is very reactive. You have to neutralize it by pouring some strong acids on it. So, because to Nigeria, the reaction of an acid in the base, we find water so that you can remove, you can leave that surface neutral. So, have it in mind. Soda and ammonia are used to are grease dissolvers in housekeeping department. After using it, because it is a strong base, remember to pour some little strong acid on that surface to make that surface neutral. The same rule applies when you use acids on a surface. Next, the acids, they are used to remove metallic stains from surfaces. So itakuwa bath, itakuwa cho, anywhere we will remove metallic stains acids are normally divided into two we have weak acids and we have strong acids an example of weak acid is vinegar and lemon while strong acid come in form of oxalic acid and salts of lemon are examples so the same rule applies. When you use a weak acid to remove a stain, remember to neutralize it with a weak base. When you use a strong base to remove stain from a surface, remember rule number one after removing the stain is to neutralize the surface. Next, we move to organic solvent. Organic solvents are also grease removers in housekeeping department. They are divided into two. We have the highly flammable and we have the ones that are not flammable, the inflammable type. When you're using the highly flammable, never use them to any naked source of fire. That means you will get burnt. Examples to gonna benzene, acetone, amyl acetate, methylated spirit, white spirit, after paraffin ikoapo. The reason why we don't use paraffin with the strong smell associated with it. So taku metoa uchaf water kwa surface na po itanuka maftata for a very long period of time. But maftata is an example of a highly flammable organic solvent we use. The inflammable type to gonna carbon tetrachloride, perchloroethylene, and trichloroethylene. These ones. Now, the rule governing is that they are so strong in smell. Therefore, when you are using them, you have to use them in a well-ventilated area. That means, after that, you talk a inje, when you kafane yuki to go inje. Now, kama ni ndaniya nyumba, open the windows completely because you can be removing grease stain and you make a kutoka by the use of the, the the highly inflammable ones. So you'll be required to use carbon tetrachloride to use. Open the window so that much fresh can get into the house. I also like cleaners. Cleaners are normally suitable 
on wallpaper and furnishing and they are available in the market aerosols ni zile za kuspray we have bleaches and disinfectant the purpose of a bleach in housekeeping department is normally to whiten surfaces that is the major purpose of a bleach and the housekeeper will tell you you only use it when there is no any other method to be used because it bleaches a surface so bleaches will be only given to you if there's no any other method because the purpose of a bleach is to whiten a surface and even they have that aspect of killing germs and preventing growth on them while disinfectant and antiseptics are used to kill germs and prevent their growth we also have deodorants in housekeeping department and the housekeeper will tell you that the purpose of a deodorant is to mask smell and it will only be used after cleaning has been performed so in the male urinals utapata kwamba after the urinal has been cleaned the what unaika the naphthalene balls to mask that strong smell of urine but towards it wa mwaka asubuhi unaenda kuweka pale naphthalene the whole establishment will smell so bleaches are used to whiten surfaces disinfectant and antiseptics are used to kill germs from surfaces so we shall clean surface by the use of a detergent remember to add a disinfectant on that surface to kill germs and prevent their growth while deodorants are used to mask bad smell from areas and they are only used after cleaning has been put so deodorants come in different forms to kuna zile aerosol sprays then it will spray kama tropical etc and then to kuna zile zenye zinaka the naphthalene balls then tuneka kwa cho you good smell and squeeze it kuna zile aromatizer spear we put them hata kwa gari tunaziweka kwa rooms but they are only used after cleaning good cleaning excellent cleaning has been performed polishes polishes are normally used to provide sheen on surfaces that is the basic use of a polish to provide sheen gloss or shine on a surface that's why we use polishes in housekeeping department with polishes you have to clean a surface then you apply it and we only use a polish on a surface if there is no any other method to be done no any other cleaning method can be performed on that surface when you are using a polish put it in little bits because some polishes are very smeary ukiweka mingi you will really take a lot of time while cleaning that surface and ensure that you have a correct type of polish when you are putting it on a surface so mtu anajiuliza in housekeeping where do we put polishes number one to go on wooden floors the polishes will be applied to them from one time to the other to go na taps to go na vitanda zile zenye ziko made of metals kama brass you will be required to apply the bra the brass and silver on them The other thing you need to know down a poko notes about polishes when polishes have high content of wax in them kama polish ya kiatu unaona iko tightly held together wax kanuba is what normally holds it together the higher the amount of wax in it the more buffing will be required to make surface shine buffing ndio kurabu mbaki shine ndio huwa unapiga kitu rangi unaiacha hapo dakika 10 unakuja kushinisha imekataa so squeeze inakuwa ni usiku unapiga kitu rangi usiku then utaishinisha morning ukitoka that is now because of 
a lot of works inside it. Itabidi kauke ndiyo ubaf shine. And these are the works in the polish, the less time you will take in buffing. So excuse me, the housekeepers are buying polishes that are made of aerosol, zaku spray. Those ones have two characteristics in them. It will clean at the same time it will apply the polish and at the same time it will buff. So it has three duties uio ya spray. But here nitaka kama rangi ya kiatu utaguza kwanza ukishapanguza ukatoa uchafu ndio kuje upake rangi then ukisha polish then ukisha maliza uiache ikuke then ukuje buff. The more the wax the deeper polish. The lesser wax receive the polish. So that is about polishes. So when it comes to metallic polishes, to kona brasso and silver, where we silver to polish silver articles, and we use brasso polish for polishing brass articles and copper articles. And this one normally occurs when tarnish have occurred on the metallic surfaces. Therefore, we apply back we remove the tarnish by the use of abrasive zile precipitated whiting and the jeweler's robe then we apply the polish then we have furniture and floor polish it is the wax content in the furniture and the floor polishes that gives it a protective layer against scratch marks abrasion and absorption of Pillages. So the utapata furniture and floor polishes will have more wax content on them to give them a protective layer on them. In general, a good furniture and floor polish should have the following characteristics. One, a hardy finish to give it maximum protection from scratches, abrasions, etc. It should be easily cleaned on the surface. Juyo kiti, itakui nakua clean from time to time. It should not get marked easily. Yani yoni scratch mark. It should reduce the cost of cleaning and maintenance. And it should not smell unpleasant. Furniture polish contains a blend of waxes and solvent to clean the wax. Silicone, which helps the wax to spread and give it a longer lasting effect, improve heat resistance, moisture, sunlight, etc. And furniture polish will come in, in a paste form, cream or liquid form. Now pia also come the ones that are sprayed on surfaces. Floor polishes are of two types. It will be based on a spirit or it will be water based. That means the spirit is the major ingredient or water is the major ingredient. If it is spirit based, it will contain natural waxes in it and the basic natural wax in a polish is normally the canuba. It will have synthetic waxes. Those are waxes that are made in the factory, apart from the candle wax. It will have synthetic resins. Those ones are again resins. Once you hear the word synthetic, it is a resin, a man-made resin in the factory. And it will have perfume. It will have silicone that will be dissolved inside the spirit. Those ones are just ingredients added to it to make it function well. Spirit-based waxes are used for the following surfaces. It will be a flow made of wool, a flow made of cork, or a flow made of magnesite. When you are applying this polish, apply a thin coat of the polish to clean 
and let it dry. Liquid wax can be sprayed on a surface by the polish applicator container. Then you will allow the solvent to evaporate, then you buff it so that it can shine. If you want to remove the polish, you will spread the solution on the area to be stripped and soak inside the polish. So basically we strip by the use of methylated spirit, white spirit, white spirit into your turpentine. Those ones are the ones that we use for stripping. Stripping is the process of removing an old polish from a surface. Then you will come by the use of abrasives to rub pole pole mbaki toke ikisha toka you will come and rinse with water and detergent allow it to dry after drying you apply the polish again water based polishes are suitable for thermoplastic floors rubber floor pvc polyvinyl chloride asphalt, composition flooring, seal dude, cork, and linoleum floss. There are three types of water-based polishes. Chukona fully buffable, semi-buffable, and dry bright. Nimesema buffing is the process of making a surface shine. Fully buffable ni lenye ukisha maliza kupaka hiyo water based polish utangoja ikauke ukuje sasa uanze kuifanya ishine semi buffable ni utapaka kisha paka ikikauka itakuwa na shine kidogo kiasi hivi so ukipenda utakuja uifanye ishine ama uleza iacha while dry bright ni lenye ukipaka ikikauka it will be shining a good emulsion polish should have the following characteristic withstand heavy wear and tear withstand spillages and washing provide a slip retardance usianguke give a good gloss give an easily cleaned surface then lastly we have floor seals a seal is normally a semi-permanent material that is normally applied on the floor just to prevent penetration of spillages. Spillages define the chai, maziwa, etc. If you have a wooden floor, remember wageni watoto watakuwa hapo and the liquids will pour on it. So before we put polishes on a wooden floor, we normally begin by putting a seal to prevent liquids from getting inside the wood, which will lead to the different kinds of rots that we have. So notes in a semi, it is a semi-permeable material which is applied on a floor to prevent the penetration of dirt, stain, liquid, and any other foreign matter. Carol, that is uh, that is a different topic. At Jafika Hapo, when a spirit stains on tiles, what can you use it? At Jafika Hapo Bado, I Bado to cleaning agents to Nakuja stain removal later. So, um, floor seals are used to prevent the penetration of liquids onto a piece of wood we have five types of seals all your resinous one pot ready two pots pigmented and water-based seals and they are all used on pieces of wood with different characteristics on them a good seal should prevent that from penetrating into the wooden floor protect the surface from spillage and stain it should have anti-slip properties. It should make the floor durable, resistant to scuff marks, 
scuff marks ndo zile zenye ukieka kiti mali for a very long period of time ita form hiyo shape let me just say a heavy thing then be quick to dry it should maintain the color it should be affordable have a long shelf life and it should have a pleasant smell when applying floor seals make sure the floor is clean and chemically neutral to prevent reactions good ventilation is very important in that area remove all the furnitures in readiness for the application then apply several thin layers rather than one thick layer so that you can have a good finish try to prevent dust from setting on the surface put a warning sign and clean the applicator immediately after use do you seal ikikauka juu ya hiyo kitu unatumia ku apply it will be very hard to remove it so those are the cleaning agents that we use in housekeeping department factors to consider when choosing cleaning agent number one type of soiling is a factor that means if you have very, very if you have uh, heavy soil powdered cleaning agent light soiling you will use lightly the liquid synthetic detergent that is an example composition of the cleaning agent is also very important as a housekeeper you must know the composition ingredients need to be reactive to the skin of the stuff possible damage on the surface you must know toxic irritation to the skin the smell packaging storage and deterioration that if after ukienda kununua lazima ujue how to store it how many days it takes lazima check expiry date before it deteriorates cost of the cleaning agent very important this cleaning agent but ukifika nayo kazi unataka kufanya you really must you wish you even the expensive one so housekeeping we don't go for cheap cleaning agents but we go for workable cleaning agent mtu akikuja anataka kukuambia now this cleaning agent it is really working you as a housekeeper you must give him or her a surface that sales person to work on you want the effect of the cleaning agent and then always the least harmful cleaning agent before resorting to the harsh product so you need acid and alkalized the other organic solvent use a weak acid a weak base before moving ikikata that is when now you use a strong acid or a weak base same to organic solvent use e kinamethylated spirit which is much easier to use because no naked fire you just make sure that there is no naked fire rather than using carbon tetrachloride that can make you die at any given minute storage and replenishing of cleaning agent you can do a requisition list to the housekeeper to say me your cleaning agent is over how do you get another one end of the tv how do you get another one you do a requisition list to your boss who is the housekeeper or you go to the stores at a set time of the day to pick another one because cleaning agents should be kept under lock for security purposes on a day to day basis a housekeeper will give you detergent a scouring agent water closet cleanser uh furniture polish air freshener sa deodorant to go and use there uh are there cleaning agents that yeah wanjiku true there are cleaning agents that require special storage very true acids bases and even deodorants 
basically all of them require special storage under lock and key for security purposes. Yeah, pili, and that CD should really be kept well, and beds should be kept well. Bleaches should also be kept well. Juki, chukwa tujik, apo nyumbani uneka kwa dirisha. Na jua inakuja, jua asubuya ama inatua. Reaction will take place. Na ndutanza kusema, nili nunua hii jik na hii jika ifanyi kazi. You are not supposed to keep them where there is light because ultraviolet rays will just occur na utabaki na hypochlorous acid enye haitafanya kitu wapu hivu. It will not bleach. So cleaning agents require proper storage. When you purchase them at the manufacturer's instruction, very important, ata kama unajua aje, Please, just read the manufacturer's instruction to. Zingine utapata ata in as much as they are inside the container. Kitu kama conch acids. They are not supposed to be put next to any base. They can just burst. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Wanjiku, you could have just turned the microphone on in Aukaungea rather than typing. Oh. Mom. Mommy. Mm. Mommy, never see the never see the window from where you're cutting. So. 